in life, you can always have a second chance or a second take. With life, once you die, that's it. That's it. Once, once you've lived your life, once you die, that's it. There's no second take. And whatever you will have done with your life before you died, that defines your life and that becomes what you're going to account for before God. And he said, when I, when, I, when I saw that as a teenager, I thought, whoa, what am I going to give my one and only life to that has no second chance? And I'm not talking about God never giving us a second chance in our lifetime. That's not what I'm talking about. But once you've lived out the fullness of your life, you, you can't come back and correct. That's what I'm saying. You're not going to come back as a locust or as a what? You, you're not, you're not, you're not. Look at the devil and say, you're not coming back, bro. You're not coming back. And he said, he says, from that stage, I started trying my best to live out my life in the area of my calling. And many people in life never work it out. Many people who just coast along in life, they don't know what their purpose is, and therefore they never give themselves to that purpose. And for that reason, they're the most unfulfilled people you'll find, even if they earn a lot of money. They may have fame, they may have notoriety, they may have everything, but there's something inside that's not satisfied. Yeah. And we need to ask God to help us. And one of the ways, if I may say, it's, in the, it's towards the end of my message, but let me say it now. One of the ways that you can find out is that you must just start serving. That's why we give people a chance in our church to serve. Serve anywhere. There is a place where when you serve there, something will happen on the inside. And you will know this is what I'm called for. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Can I hear a good amen? amen? And so we noticed in the Bible that the Bible tells us about gifts that God has given. These gifts are not meant exclusively to be used in church. These gifts are to be used in life. Are you understanding me? And remember, your life is a continuum. Right? Your life is a continuum. You are, the same, you, are, you, are, you are the same person. It's just that you happen to live in a house. So, you know, you go to work and you go to church. But you're the one person. And this gift can work in any of those areas. Okay? You don't shift that when you come to church, now you're another person. And this is where people have kind of have this contradiction. Like, like when they come to church, all of a sudden they're different. You know, there's some people, once they get into church, all of a sudden their voice is softer. <laughs> they're nicer. Tell your neighbor, the bishop saw you. You said, that nicer. You know. You know, you know. <laughs> and that's why with us as the clergy, I've never understood why they want to train us this way at Bible school, that when you preach, you must have a preaching voice. Yeah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> the Lord is coming. And he's going. So you have a preaching voice, and you have a conversation voice, and you have another voice for at home. Ah, he's sugar man. Must just be one voice. <laughs> but these gifts, Barcelona, they work anywhere. Whether you are in a, in a secular job, whether you are in church, whether you are in politics, it doesn't matter. These gifts work. And every one of us here, you have at least one gift. I want to argue, I think you have at least two gifts. They can work concurrently. Okay. Uh, but these gifts, you need to know them. You need to know how to identify them. So just for the next 10 minutes I've got, I want us to talk a bit about the leadership gifts. In all areas, I can tell you, where there's leadership, things are different. But there are people God has given the gift of leadership. And so that verse says, if you're a leader, lead. Don't sit on your gift. Don't bury your gift. Lead. And it says lead diligently. It already tells you that leading is a lot of hard work. It's very difficult to have to lead in some of these circumstances. Because sometimes the very people that you are leading don't understand where you are trying to take them. And when you try and lead, you need resources and you don't have them in your community. But you have to make it work because leaders make things work. They just have the divine ability from God to make things work. They make a plan, I tell you. Leaders not only give vision, not only motivate others, but they give direction and they mobilize people to become a team, to work as a unit to fulfill God's purposes. So, here are the distinctives of people with this leadership gift. Number one, they provide direction for God's people or ministry or organization. They provide direction. 
Because that vision is about direction. And where there's no vision, people perish. Where there's no vision, people become demoralized and people go all over the shop. There's no direction. The second distinctive is that these people motivate others to perform to the best of their abilities. There are many people who have what it takes, but they just need a leader to kind of fan their fire. They just need a leader to place them where they belong and they can come alive. You see, Leaders are able to take something that's dead and bring it to life. Yeah. No matter how much they've been losing. <laughs> Number three, leaders present the big picture for others to see. So leaders try not to be caught up by small side issues. They try to give the big picture. See, here's the big picture. Here's what we can do. Nehemiah comes to the people and says, come, let us rebuild. Come, let us rebuild. But the Sanballat and the Tobias, they want to concern themselves with side issues. So you don't have their stuff. It's taking you too long. Do you think you will do this? Others have failed. Those are side issues. As a leader, you have to help people not to be taken off by the side issues and give them the big picture. Are you learning anything this morning, church? Yes. 